Hi everyone, it's Nirala again. My other talk today focuses on whether eating honey has any therapeutic benefits, specifically whether honey can act as a prebiotic food that promotes good gut health. Like its many other medicinal uses, there are many records showing the use of honey for the treatment of digestive ailments. For example, here we have an ancient Arab script showing the making of medicine from honey. And this medicine was prescribed for digestive issues like stomach and intestinal bloating or swelling, diarrhea and cramping. It's unlikely though that the use of honey for digestive ailments is due to its antimicrobial activity because we wouldn't expect this type of activity to survive our digestive process. So we think that honey might be acting in a different way when we eat it, and this could be linked to the many millions of bacteria living in our gut, known as our gut microbiome. We're appreciating more and more that not all bacteria and microbes are bad. Most are actually good for us. So over the past century, there's been a shift from just trying to get rid of all bacteria and microbes to trying to nurture and harbour the right types in the right balance. When we talk about microbiomes, we're referring to communities of bacteria and other microorganisms that live in a particular habitat. These can be everywhere. They're found in the soil, in the air, in the water, and of course, on and inside of us as well. We now understand that these bacteria are actually essential for our survival. They perform a range of very important functions in the environment and also in our bodies. The largest bacteria population of bacteria in the human body lives in our gut. And now there's a lot of research targeted in trying to understand what it is these gut bacteria do in our bodies and just how important they are to our overall health. We know that these bacteria influence the normal functioning of our bodies and our nutrition and health. They can help to build our immune system. They fight off infections and disease. They also influence our hormones, our immune system, and even the way our brains work. And because of all of these important roles, we're very focused on trying to create and maintain a healthy gut. Now, we still don't know exactly what a healthy human gut should look like, but what we do know is that it's important to have lots of different types of bacteria and that they should be in a balance of both beneficial types and some, even some that are normally thought of being har as harmful. When the balance of our gut bacteria is off, that's when we start to see things like bowel diseases, including colon cancer, IBD or IBS, and also conditions out of the gut as well. Our gut bacteria seem to influence whether we get fat, suffer from allergies or heart conditions, or even mental health issues. We can also see the balance in our gut get disrupted if we get a gut infection. And that happens when potentially harmful bacteria breach the protective barrier of our intestines, and set up camp in here. So essentially the numbers of the potentially harmful bacteria outweigh the numbers of the beneficial ones. One particularly problematic example of a gut infection and one that we're interested in working on is called C. difficile infection. Now this is caused by a particular type of bacteria called C. difficile and it often happens after we take a course of antibiotics because these antibiotics wipe out most of our gut bacteria, allowing these potentially harmful ones to really quickly repopulate the gut. In some cases, it just presents as mild diarrhea, but C. difficile infection can quickly progress to life-threatening inflammation of the bowels. And because there aren't many effective treatments for this gut infection, we're interested in finding out whether we can use honey to help. So there are a few different ways we can manipulate the balance of our gut microbiome. Our lifestyle and hygiene habits and whether we take antibiotics affects this balance. And of course, our diet plays an important role too, because certain foods that we eat called prebiotics can also feed our gut bacteria. So back to our what do we want to learn from honey questions. Here we're focusing on whether there are any benefits of eating honey. Is honey a good prebiotic food? How does it affect our microbiome? What contributes to this prebiotic effect? And can it be used to re-engineer a compromised gut? So can we use honey to target certain gut-related conditions? So first we'll start off by looking at what a prebiotic actually is. A prebiotic is a complex carbohydrate or a sugar, like those found in many root vegetables, that we don't digest ourselves. So it reaches the lower gut or the colon where it can be used as a food source by the many different bacteria living in our gut. Our main research question is whether honey is a good prebiotic food. We know that honey is made up mostly of simple sugars, fructose and glucose, but there are some complex sugars or oligosaccharides that we don't digest ourselves. So these could be driving some of that prebiotic activity in our gut. 
I first started looking at this during my PhD using a laboratory gut model. And I used digestive enzymes and other compounds to treat the honey as if it were passing through our digestive tract. And then we used the honey or the digested honey to feed our gut microbes. And these are microbes that exist in our stool. So here I looked at 20 Australian honeys from different floral sources. We had eucalyptus honeys, canola honeys, and leptospermum, or those manuka type honeys as well. And to sum up four years of research in one little cartoon, we found that all of the honeys had prebiotic potential because they either boost the numbers of the beneficial bacteria, reduce the numbers of the potentially harmful bacteria, or increase the production of beneficial compounds called short chain fatty acids. And these are made by our gut bacteria to help fight off against gut disease. So the honeys were either doing one of these things or a combination of all of these things. We then ran a pilot clinical study with healthy volunteers, looking at whether a small daily dose of honey would show similar results to our laboratory model. We looked at the changes in the gut populations and the compounds that the gut bacteria were producing. And again, this was done from stool samples collected from our volunteers before and after honey consumption for a month. So in these results, the gray lines show the response of the individual participants. The solid black lines show the overall trend or the mean response. And what we found was that honey helped to boost the numbers of those beneficial bacteria highlighted in the blue and green, so the lactobacilli and bifidobacteria populations. And honey also helped to reduce the numbers of the potentially harmful bacteria, the Clostridia group, which is highlighted in the red. We also saw that honey helped our gut microbes produce more of those beneficial compounds, those short chain fatty acids that play a protective role in the development and progression of many gut related diseases. And it didn't seem to matter which of the honeys we used. So we picked four from that group of 20 um, honeys that we screened. And it didn't matter which of the honeys the volunteers ate. The trends, was all, the trends were always the same. So we don't think that this prebiotic activity is linked directly to the floral source, which is very different to the antibacterial activity that we see. In particular, it was this reduction of the potentially harmful group, the Clostridia group, that we were really excited about because C. difficile infection is caused by a species of bacteria in this Clostridia group. So we wanted to understand whether we could use honey to either prevent or treat infections in the gut. So our current project looks at teasing this apart a little bit more. We're looking at a couple of our state honeys that are produced in high volume, but don't demand those premium prices. And we have two main approaches. We're running a clinical study where we're looking at the populations of bacteria in the gut, the compounds that they produce, and also understanding how these changes might be influencing our immune system or our immune response. And by identifying these trends better, we might be able to find certain honeys or certain gut conditions that could be targeted with certain honeys. We're also using gut models in the, in the laboratory to look at whether honey can help to target certain gut infections. And I'll present some of those results now. I don't have any results from the clinical study yet. It's still ongoing. And we were affected obviously by COVID-19 and recruitment for the clinical study stopped. So my honours student this year, Izzy, looked at three main areas in uh, those laboratory model experiments. We looked at whether honey can reduce the numbers of the potential pathogens already living in the gut. We looked at whether, our, whether honey could reduce the number of C. difficile in a simulated model infection. And we also looked at whether honey helps our gut microbes produce compounds that can kill other pathogens, external pathogens that cause gut infections. So she chose three different honeys to look at. We had a manuka type honey, a jelly bush honey, one of those leptospermum honeys. We had a honey that was known for its high level of oligosaccharides and is currently being sold as a prebiotic honey. And we also looked at a yellow box honey, which is just a very commonly produced uh, honey in high volumes in New South Wales in our state that has low antibacterial activity. And from my PhD work, it looked like it might have uh, prebiotic potential. We also had inulin as our positive control, which is uh, often referred to as the gold standard prebiotic. So we set up these laboratory gut models using stool samples from healthy volunteers as the inoculum source. And that represents the diversity of bacterial populations in our gut. We then added either the honeys or the inulin positive control. And we also had a similar negative control where we had no honey or no inulin. We then counted the change in the potentially harmful bacteria already living in our gut. 
And specifically, we were looking at how the populations of Salmonella and E. coli, which are associated with food poisoning, changed, and also C. difficile, because that's our um, pathogen of interest. So what we found were that the numbers of Salmonella and E. coli changed before and after eating honey. So the dark gray bars are the before, the lighter gray bars are the after. So when we look at Salmonella and E. coli, we saw that the honeys, all three honeys, were very good at reducing the numbers of those potential pathogens already living in the gut. And they did this at least as well as, if not better, than the inulin positive control. And you can see compared to the no honey control, even though those numbers of Salmonella and E. coli did drop, they were nowhere near as good as when the honey or inulin were included. When we looked at the C. difficile populations, um, we found that the numbers of C. difficile were already very low to start off with. And in some cases, the honey actually boosts the numbers of C. difficile. So it didn't necessarily reduce the numbers of C. difficile. And especially compared to our positive and negative control, um, the honeys did not work as well. So overall, it looks like honey can reduce some of the potentially harmful bacteria already living in our gut, but not necessarily all. Next, we wanted to simulate that C. difficile model in, uh, infection in, a, in the laboratory model. So we set up gut models like before with the stool sample, but this time we seeded C. difficile. So we added a, an infectious dose of C. difficile there. And again, we were counting the before and after uh, numbers of C. difficile to see how they changed. And what we found were, again, like before, the darker grey bars show the number of C. difficile before honey treatment and the lighter grey bars show after. And what we found were the C. difficile numbers did drop after honey treatment. Um, but when we compared it to the no honey negative control, so this is when there's no honey and no inulin, then having no honey there actually made the C. difficile numbers drop even more than having honey or inulin. So not even the positive control was that good at reducing the numbers of C. difficile. And it actually looks like having no honey and inulin was better than including these treatments. So, so far, it looks like honey might not be a suitable option to use on C. difficile directly. But from our other studies, we do know that it can have some kind of effect. So we wanted to tease this apart a little bit more. So we thought maybe honey was actually helping our other gut microbes kill off these pathogens, including C. difficile. Maybe that was explaining the reduction of the Clostridia group. So rather than honey having a direct effect, could we then feed our gut microbes honey to make them produce compounds that could then kill pathogens like C. difficile? So that was our next experimental setup here. Um, again, we had the stool samples from our healthy volunteer. We had our honey or our positive control and our negative control. And what we did was after letting the bacteria feed on that honey for a while and make their compounds, we took just those compounds of interest and that was in the supernatant. And then we looked at how well that supernatant was at inhibiting pathogens that we were interested in killing off. And what we found was honey was very effective at helping out gut microbes produce those compounds that kill pathogens. So when we look at our honey or our inulin treatment here, you can see that salmonella, which is one of those uh, food poisoning type pathogens, the numbers of salmonella were really low compared to when there was no honey in the system at all. Same kind of trend with the E. coli. When we had honey in the system, our gut microbes produced compounds that kept the numbers of these pathogens really low compared to no honey at all. So you can see all of the honeys and the inulin were equally effective. And a similar kind of story for C. difficile. So although it wasn't as effective at killing off the C. difficile as it was at E. coli and salmonella, definitely having honey in the system helped our gut microbes make compounds that stopped the growth of C. difficile compared to when there was no honey in the system at all. So even though it looks like honey might not have a direct killing effect on C. difficile in the gut, we can still manage the numbers of C. difficile by using honey to feed our other gut microbes, which can then fight off C. difficile indirectly. So to sum up all of this work, we think that honey can be an effective prebiotic, and it can do this by reducing the numbers of potentially harmful bacteria already living in the gut. It can also reduce the numbers of bacteria that cause food poisoning and that harmful C. difficile population as well. But we need to do a little bit more work here to understand better if it might work as a preventative approach or a treatment. 
And finally, when our gut bacteria are in the presence of honey, they themselves can produce compounds that kill those invading harmful bacteria. And this could prevent an infection from occurring in the first place. So it means that we don't necessarily have to use honey to treat the infections or directly kill the gut pathogens, but we can use it to boost our overall gut microbiome health and help our gut microbes produce compounds that stop infections. So overall, we're also finding that different honeys can offer different therapeutic benefits, and these can be used to target different conditions, not just for our gut health, but certain honeys might be better as prebiotics compared to antibacterial honeys, compared to antioxidant honeys, for example. So again, I'll just finish off by thanking the many researchers that have contributed to all of the bioactive honey projects that we do, our funding bodies and industry partners, of course, and for all of you for attending today. And if you have any questions, I would love to hear from you. Thanks.